Hello? All right, so um, being that it's uh, 7.01, I am going to start. So again, my name is Sandria Goodall and I'm the owner of All Good Accounting. Um, I have been doing my business, believe it or not, since 1977. And um, I've started it and then stopped it. And, you know, back in 2016 is when I really went in and uh, revamped it and did, and did everything online. And this is where I am today. So just a quick background about who I am. I have a degree in accounting finance from Ryerson University. And I have worked in the accounting world for, I was doing for 15 years. Um, I have uh, about one or two more courses left to finish my CGA. Um, or CPA now that it's called, and um, I have worked in a couple of uh, public accounting firms, and uh, I'm also a teacher as well. I teach with the Toronto District School Board and uh, teach math and business, and uh, right now, currently, though, I'm in the elementary panel, and so I'm doing some work there as well. So that's a little bit about who I am. Um, so I'm going to be sharing my screen as I do this presentation. So, um, oops, it says stop presenting. So I'm going to share, present right now, and then uh, go from there. Just give me one moment here. At times, I will take myself off uh, speaker. Um, sorry, take myself off presenting, and then you know I can answer any questions as we go along, and uh, you know go, as we go through the different screens. Okay, so um, I'll be asking questions along the way as well. Um, so first of all, I want to um, at least define what incorporation means. Right, um, incorporation means to create your company as a legal entity, okay? It becomes a legal person in the eyes of the law. It can bring lawsuits, can buy and sell property, make contracts, be taxed, and even commit crimes. Um, you know, there's three major um, types of businesses in Canada. The first one is the sole proprietorship. The second one is partnerships. And the third one is the incorporation, which is the one I'll be discussing today. And just a brief, quick a synopsis about the first two. So being a sole proprietor is the easiest type of business formation. It's usually formed by single uh, unit operators and uh, it's less the least costly. And you and the business is recognized as one person. So you actually file your personal taxes along with your, your, uh, your, your, your business. And it's, you know, and it, 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 you can be highly taxed uh, under that system. And um, I will show you and discuss a little bit about incorporation, why it's one of the reasons to incorporate is to lower your tax. The second one is a partnership. And the main ingredient in a partnership is where you have more than two persons in a business. And there is some sort of a, a verbal or a written partnership agreement between both persons and they operate under that and you know it's always referred to in case there is disagreements or disruptions that partnership agreement is key and again it's um, you know it's the same formation as a sole proprietorship uh, the only thing is when you file your personal taxes the portion that you own is 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 uh, included on your personal tax return okay so if you own 50 percent of the business then 50 percent of the revenue and expenses are allocated on your personal return now incorporation as i discussed the what it is um here are some reasons why uh businesses incorporate and one of the main reasons is what we call limited liability under this structure um, the, the person who has incorporated the business is now a separate person. They file, so the corporation now is a separate entity and they file their own taxes, they buy their own things, they, 
they um, get into contracts on their own. And the, the person who incorporated the business is now what we call a director or somebody who works within the, the organization. And hence why we have what we call limited liability. And limited liability is when now, being that the organization is now a, a separate entity, um, it, it has the responsibility to buy things and go into debt. And so you as the owner uh, or the incorporator, you know, can buy things under the name of the corporation. And hence, if there are any debts or, um, you know, uh, you know, liabilities that may not be able to be paid, your personal assets are not um, at risk, whereas it will now be under the corporation's uh, account to be at risk. So that's why we have what we call limited liability. OK, now. Just one thing under this structure, um, usually small businesses that start um, initially, you know, they don't have enough credibility, they don't have enough assets. So most of the time, if you were going to go to a bank to, you know, maybe get a mortgage or buy some equipment or whatnot, um, they would ask you for personal guarantee. And in that case, if uh, you're not able to make the payments, your personal assets would be at risk. Okay. The next thing is unlimited life. So again, the life of the corporation will now not be dependent on the life of the particular individual or individuals uh, in the corporation. Whereas under a sole proprietorship, you and the, the business are one. So if you die, then the business die, basically. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, whereas in a corporation, if owners die, then, you know, they, they, we have what we call transfer of shares or transfer of ownership. When that is set up, you know, that's all taken care of in the setup. So if, you know, if somebody dies, there's transition wherein um, different directors and, you know, different rules apply. So this is where the unlimited life uh, continues. And of course, if you want to at some point, um, if you want to at some point, uh, you know, you know, have the corporation um, go out or, you know, die, basically, then you, there are forms that you could fill out and then it will then dissolve. OK, um, lower tax rates is another reason why uh, individuals incorporate. Um, the corporate tax rate is typically lower than an individual's tax rate. Um, you as an individual is charged 15 uh, percent on the first forty eight thousand um, of your income. And then it, it progressively increases. So if your income is above, uh, I would say, 150000 you're at the 29% tax rate. And if your income is over what we have, 214000 then you're taxed at a rate of 33%. And this is for the year 2019, 2020 um, tax year. Uh, the rates changes per uh, level of income. But you can see how high that is. Whereas if you were to incorporate, um, there are several deductions that are applicable to a, a corporation. Um, initially, you would have what you call um, uh, you, the basic rate, which is at 38%. And then you'll get a deduction of what you call a federal abatement, which is 10% less, which will then bring you down to 28%. And then you have what you call the small business deduction, which is about 19% uh, for the year 2019. So if you were to deduct 28% uh, from 19%, you're down to the 9%. And, you know, 9% versus 15% um, is definitely the way to go in when you want to reduce your taxes payable. Again, um, I'm not going to get into detail about this part, but um, I, I guess I, I want to drive home the point that the lower tax rate is what is is one of the benefits of incorporating your business and having better access to financing is another one um, financial institutions private investors are more likely to take a chance on an incorporated business versus a sole proprietorship okay even lenders often give corporations lower rates because they're deemed less risky so a lot of businesses incorporate for the sake of being able to get loans and another thing is business name protection. Um, oops, I jumped to this slide here. Business name protection in that um, the business name, oops. 
the business name you choose is reserved for you and you only. And if you incorporate your business federally, you have the right to use your business name throughout the country. Even if somebody who has um, incorporated provincially and is using that same name, you as a person who um, has that name federally you will be able to use your name throughout the country. Okay. And um, yeah, so I'll keep going. So there's two types of yeah. Now, if, are there any questions so far? I know I'm going a little bit fast. Janelle, are there any questions? No. Hello? No, no so far? Okay. Feel free to interject and ask a question because I'll be more than happy to, to answer, um, uh, you know, any questions. Okay. So next slide here is incorporate federally or provincially. That would be a choice that you have when you decide on incorporating. And so if you were to incorporate federally, um, as mentioned, you will be able to carry on business in all provinces and territories, as long as you register your corporation in all of the provinces in which you'll be conducting business. And again, most businesses, unless you are um, wanting to operate internationally and you know that your business is something that will need to be operated in all the provinces, then this is where you would go into federal incorporation. Okay. And then throughout the process, while you federally incorporate, you will have options in the application to um, register intra-provincially um, to the different provinces under which you want to, to operate in. Okay. Um, also, you will be able to use the name, the same name in each province. Okay even if another company is already doing business and the corporation will be recognized uh, internationally. Okay. Uh, next. Oops. I went backwards. <laughs> okay. So if you were to incorporate provincially, what happens in this case is your corporation will only have the right to carry on business in the province or territory wherein you wish to incorporate. Okay. And just to add on to that, um, if you operate in a particular province, for example, let's say Ontario, and you wish to, um, you know, operate in say Manitoba, then you would then need to register with the corporate registry in that, in that province. And uh, then you'll be able to operate. So you will not be able to go ahead and operate. You'll have to go ahead and register into that corporation, uh, sorry, into that province before you can operate. Now, what does it look like? Well, you can buy and sell things in the different provinces, but what we mean by register and operate would be to have employees in that particular province or to have a, a structure like a business, uh, biz, uh, you know, building in that province. So that's what it means to operate provincially in that particular province. It's, you can, you know, you can do business with like buy and sell things in a particular province. You will not need to, you know, register provincially there, but it's only if you have employees, you have a building set up and you're fully operating in that province, that's when you would need to register provincially. Um, the decision to incorporate federally or provincially, again, depends on the scope of the business. Um, again, how wide you want it to go. Um, and if you are setting up a one person or a small corporation and only planning to do business in one province for now, there's probably no, no need to incorporate federally. Okay. And again, I mentioned about the extra provincial corporation um, that you would do in terms of expanding. Now we're going to look at some steps to incorporate your business in Canada and also in the province of Ontario. So when you decide to incorporate, the first thing you would need to do is decide on the name of your corporation. And again, um, whatever name you choose, you would then need to what we call conduct a nuanced name search. That's the name that's given to the name search. Uh, okay. And I interrupt? yes, go ahead. Okay, just before you move on, um, could you say the difference in cost or what is the financial ramifications of 
registering federally um, or provincially before you move on? Yes, um, I'm actually going to be getting to that uh, later on in the slides okay. um, to see the cost differential. Um, but just to give you a synopsis, um, you know, to, to, your, to your question, um, there are standard costs um, that the government charges. So um, for if you wanted to incorporate federally, the, the actual cost is $200 plus um, the nuance name search that you would need to, to, to take on. Um, and I'm gonna go into that in, in, a, in, in a later slide. And if you were to incorporate uh, provincially, it's uh, like $360 provincially for the province of Ontario specifically, plus the nuance name search. And the nuance name search can be anywhere from 40, you know, to $70, depending on the, um, the particular um, outlet that you go to. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank okay, you. good. All right. All right. So to continue on, so you'll do what you call a nuanced name search. And once you you once approved, you can use this name across Canada if federally incorporated or only in the province of Ontario. Now, um, if you are incorporating federally or in the Northwest Territories, and these are the specific only two, you can order a nuanced name search yourself. So um, the you know when you go online and you know you go to to say register your business do an incorporation one of the benefits of doing it federally um, is that you could conduct your own nuance name search and the fee i believe for that is 13 dollars 80 it's very very cheap um, and also this applies to the northwest territories um, if you're not doing your uh, federal incorporation or you're not doing an incorporation in the Northwest Territories, then you'll need to find a nuance member to conduct the nuance name search for you for a fee. And again, as I mentioned, the fee could range anywhere from 40 to $75, um, depending on what that particular company charges. And you could find them, you know, you just do nuance name search member you know, in your Google and, you know, depending on the area in which you live, then they will pop up and then you could reach out to them and then you can make the appointment and, and they, they will take care of you on that level. And you'll make, you'll pay your fee at that point. And then they will give you a printout of the names and the name that you choose. And, and at that point, that will be your name. And just to add to that, um, at the bottom, you can see here, it says, oops, I jumped a little bit too fast here. Um, it says um, the new ones report. I want to get rid of this uh, um, bottom bar here. Janelle, how do you do that? Anyway, the new ones report cannot be dated more than 90 days prior to the submission of the article. So if you were to go and get this new ones names done, you know, by a nuanced member, say today we're in what, August? So we have um, <clears throat> July, we have June, and we have um, <clears throat> May. So your nuanced name search has to be within those from May to August. Otherwise, if you had it in say April, then it will be considered mm -hmm. invalid and would not be um, applicable. Um, could you hold the line one second? One second. I am in the presentation. Oh, yes, I'm in the presentation. I am in the presentation. Sorry about that. I had a personal call that I had to take. Oh, boy. Okay. So um, going forward here, um, uh, one other thing I need to mention is if you're using a numbered company, um, there is no need to conduct what you call a nuanced name search. Uh, a number will be assigned. And what I mean by that is the, you know, 
some businesses they have like a number that comes up you know like if they don't want to put a number a name and they want to operate as something they will just um avoid or you know do not do the the, the name search and what uh, the government will do is just assign a number and then that number will be that number that you use to recognize yourself and that's the number that you would use when you file your tax return and it's actually that number is actually your provincial number your provincial recognized number okay if you were if you were to um uh be be incorporated in the province of ontario okay so i'll keep going now, um, I am going to discuss this form and then I'm going to show you a look of this form. So initially, when after you've done your nuanced name search, everything is good. You go and complete what you call an article of incorporation, which is called a form one. If you're going to um, incorporate federally or a form one articles of incorporation for Ontario Business Corporation. So that's when you're going to incorporate under in Ontario and for each one of these forms, um, if you're doing it online, obviously you don't need to complete it in duplicate, but if you're doing it by mail or in person, then you would need to complete it in duplicate, bearing the original signatures. And on this form, you would enter your name and address of the corporation, okay, the one that you did for your nuanced name search. Um, you'll enter the number of first directors and um, there must be at least 25% must be Canadian resident, okay? And um, minimum, you should have at least one to 10 at minimum. You could have more than that. And I always encourage, uh, you, know, uh, you know, my clients to do um, at least one to a maximum of 15. So in case later on and you have added more directors, you will not need to go in and update and which would then cost you and then you know it would delay things you already you already have the room to add uh directors okay um the next thing you would do is prepare what you call a cover letter which includes the contact name address telephone number of persons um that would be that if there were any questions about the 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 application or about any of the content of the articles, this person would be would be the contact person, and it, it most likely can be your accountant. It could be, you know, um, yourself, who's the owner of the company. Um, it's just something that uh, Canada Revenue Agency would need as a contact. Then you have uh, the opportunity to enter the name of the first directors. Again, these would be the, the, the directors of the corporation and along with their addresses. And then you would input what you call restrictions, if any, the corporation may carry on. Now, restrictions would look something like, um, you know, for example, you, you have a, a company that sells, um, you know, clothing and the restriction would be, um, you only will be selling clothing. You will not be selling anything else other than clothing. So if you decide to sell um, printers or computers, then, you know, that would be your restrictions. Um, and so what I tend to, to say to clients is do not put any restrictions there. Just leave the restrictions open because you're only limiting yourselves, especially when you want to have different departments or you want to expand your business. Um, list of com list of classes, number of shares the corporation is authorized to issue. Now, this is where um, the idea of transferability of ownership comes in. Um, you, as the owner of the organization or the corporation, um, will, um, if you're the sole one, you will have 100% of ownership. And if you have other people coming in, you know, then you would allocate them share ownership according to your shareholders agreement. And there's different levels and kinds of shares. And, uh, you know, your lawyer or your incorporator, your accountant will, will can differentiate what they are. And I, and I will differentiate what they are. So a common share would be the most basic um, level of share that you could give to anyone that comes into your organization. They will have the opportunity to vote um, and um, 
you know, buy and sell shares and ownership in your business. Okay. And you can limit the amount that, you know, individuals can own, you know, so that um, obviously they don't take over the ownership of your organization. And then you have what you call preferred shares and, and preferred shares are obviously you get preferred treatment. And again, this is because you as an investor may have given a, a certain level of income to the, to the company. And so in case where there is some, you know, when the company gets deregulated or gets dissolved, then you are paid out first your debts versus somebody who has a common share. And I always say, um, have them be unlimited again, because if your business expand and you will say, okay, well, there are only a hundred common shares here and there's only a hundred preferred shares here. Then, you know, when you do expand, you know, you will have to then redo your, your article of incorporation again. Okay. So I'm just going to show you. Um, and then again, it says rights and privileges, restrictions and conditions, if any. And, um, and then this will be attached to each of the shares, the, the classes of shares. And, you know, common shares usually have um, ability to vote. Um, you know, being a, a preferred share owner, you have the privilege of getting your, your money paid back to you. When the company uh, goes into bankruptcy, you'll get yours first before um, the common shareholders restrictions and conditions would mean um, maybe you cannot um, transfer your shares to someone you would have to get the um, the go ahead from the the, the directors first um, you know so you so this will then prevent um, you know what you call somebody or a group of people taking over the, the the corporation so these are the restrictions and conditions that one would put in in terms of the transferability um you know share splitting buying back shares things like that and the next thing would be restrictions on issue transfer or ownership of shares again this is this is also along that same line and other provisions you know uh provisions would be you know if you decide to open your company in quebec do you want to use the, your french name instead of your english name and and stuff like that. So that's what it, it would mean. I will show you a quick example here um, of, of, uh, uh, of the article of incorporation after I finish this section. And um, let me just see here. Uh, let me. Okay. I'll just continue here and then I'll show it to you. So if you were to incorporate your, your business in the province of Ontario, you complete, uh, you know, again, um, no, sorry, if you were to do an extra provincial corporation, um, so this is when you incorporate federally, then you'll, if you want to operate in the province of Ontario, you would need to complete what you call a form two, which is an extra provincial corporation. And um, here you would indicate the date on which your business started operating in Ontario, the language preference, the address of the principal office of where you would be, the name and address of the chief or a manager in Ontario, if that is applicable, and the name and title of the authorizing individual, okay? You will also need to indicate your corporate records where they'll be kept, um, where official documents will be mailed or served to the corporation. Um, and this is the address that all documents will be assumed to have been received by the corporation. And lastly, um, the name and address of each of the incorporators, again, uh, will have to be recorded here. And, and you, of course, you'll be submitting and paying your fee online or mailing in your two copies of articles of incorporation signed by each corporator, okay? Or drop it off in person. Those will be your options. Okay, so I'm just going to show you, I'm going to um, exit my screen here and just show you an example of that. Um, let me just go here for a minute and show you a, a form. You can still see my screen, yes? Hello? 
Can you all see my screen? I can. Oh, you can. Okay, great. So this is when you're filling it, you're, you're filling it out by hand here. Um, I could not show you the one fillable online because obviously you actually, you'd actually have to do it online. But you can see here the instructions for completing. And here's your fee, okay, the, the general admin fee by that the, the, orga, you know, the government uh, charges you. Um, again, it's giving you instructions about the name search that you will have to um, uh, go to. And then to do it, you could, if you want to find out the members, you go to www.nuance.com. As the as where that's where you'll find the members uh, that does the nuance name search. Okay, they're registered with the, the province of Ontario. And if you were to go down, you'll you will see, you know, again, you, if you want your name in English and French, um, and you could do a name search for both, and then have those two names, uh, um, you know, registered. Okay. Um, so he says you're when incorporating a corporation with an English and French form, the name and name search is required for each form of the name. Okay. Um, number names, as mentioned, you will not need to, you do not need a name search. Okay. And, you know, you just leave out the name and then the, to indicate the kind of, uh, or to indicate that you're, you're, you're a corporation, you would need to have either limited or French limite or the word incorporated or incorporate or incorporation or LTD or Inc or Corp. So either one of these endings you would need to add to your business name. And again, you know, it's whatever you prefer. Okay. There's no stipulation as to meanings. Uh, you know, if, if limited means anything different from incorporated, they all mean the same thing. All right, and as I mentioned, you're covering the letter here with the name and address of the individual that would be responsible for any questions that arise. And, and it gets, so this is where you would then fill it out. You'll fill in your name in the, in the boxes here. And I'll just quickly scroll down here. It just tells you about the different articles. Oops. So here, um, this is the actual form article of incorporation. Okay. This is the one for Ontario. This is where you'll put in the number of directors. Okay. Max the fixed number or minimum and maximum. I always say, don't put in that fixed number, put in your minimum and maximum number. One to 15 is good. One to 25 is good. Again, this will prevent any kind of adjustments later on. And this is where you would enter your first director's name and their addresses and whether they are uh, residents of, of Canada. Again, restrictions, if any, okay. Um, I usually write the word none here just to give yourself open space. This is where you would then enter the classes and any number of shares uh, that the corporation is authorized or will be authorized to issue. You'll fill all of that out. Um, and then you'll fill in your rights, rights, privileges, restrictions, and conditions, if any, for each class of shares. Okay. You'll, you'll include that all here. And then um, the issue or transfer of ownership of shares and the restrictions um, along that line. Okay. And then other provisions, if there are any, and then the name and address of the incorporator of incorporation, fill it in here. Okay. And then it will just be signed by the signatures of all the incorporators. If there are more than four, then you could attach another sheet and fill in their name and, and and when you are mailing it in you'll have to submit um two two copies okay two signed copies um and uh you would then submit it to ontario business uh, incorporator incorporation so that's what the form looks like in mail form you know in handwriting handwritten form 
it looks different obviously when you're doing it online but um again you know that's that's what it looks like uh online i mean so now um any questions with that so far because now i'm going to move on to what happens after incorporation Any questions? No? Okay. All right. So after incorporate. Oh, yeah. There's a question in the chat box that I typed in. Okay. But um, I guess I'll just say it. Um, I'm wondering if you're incorporating a business provincially, but receiving funds um, and getting sales internationally, is that a potential issue or that doesn't matter? So you're saying you, you registered provincially? and you're getting funds from other places outside of the province? Yeah. Yeah, that would not be an issue. Um, the The main issue is where you are operating in, okay? So you could have sales in different regions, different provinces, you know, get your funding from other places. Not a problem, especially if you're a nonprofit and you're operating in Ontario and Depending on the funder, if they're saying that they're giving funds to come to nonprofits that are located in Ontario, then that's your qualifier, right? Um, but the main thing that identifies uh, whether you are operating in a particular province is if you have employees located in that particular um, province and also whether you have a business structure like an office set up in that location. Mm, employees and office space are the indicators okay yes um there's another question from tosh i don't know if you want to ask um verbally tosh or yeah she could ask verbally if she'd like or i'll read it out quickly maybe i don't know if her mic's not on um she's asking is there a minimum age for the additional directors for example can you add your children as directors um, okay, that's a great question. So the age obviously is, um, if you're 18, you're considered, considered an adult. Um, your, your children can be, um, be directors. The, the only thing that happens in this case, um, is when you, which is good because, you know, you could transfer ownership and, you know, and all of that, but we have what we call um, income splitting that um, becomes an issue when you know when sometimes when a when a corporation wants to um, you know save money on taxes they tend to you know um, you know pay the the child more because they're in a lower tax bracket and so we got to be careful with things like that because the government penalizes us very harshly if they discover that. So there's not a problem with having your your, your family member, um, must be at least 18 years of age, obviously. Um, if they're younger, then they you have to be like a trust. Uh, you know, you, you'll have to wait until they're at that age where they're um, considered adults. Does that answer your question? Sorry, there is a bike going by. <laughs> I'm in a neighborhood, obviously, you know, in Jamaica, you're pr pretty close to the road. So, <laughs> you know, you hear all kind of vehicles. So, sorry, does that answer your question? Um, yeah, Tash said, yes, it did. Thank you. And her okay. mic wasn't um, coming off mute. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So now, and, and continue to ask the questions that are, that is great. So after incorporation now on the federal level, um, what happens is, you know, the government sends you, um, and it's in fact, is actually immediately, maybe five minutes later, you will check your inbox in your email and you'll see a certificate of incorporation, uh, copies of your articles of incorporation, your federal business number, um, federal corporation income tax program account number, um, you'll have the option to register for a federal tax account like HST, payroll, and stuff like that. And you will call CRA for that. Um, and uh, if you, copies of the provincial form you filed, if you did any extra provincial uh, incorporation at that time. 
And um, the number, though, um, if you if your if your application for extra provincial registration is approved, because that's another step, the government will send you your Ontario business number, and usually that will take maybe a week later, because it it, it it's a different process other than the federal, so it just takes a, a little bit longer. Okay, so that's what happens after incorporation, and then also after incorporation federally. Within 60 days of your incorporation, the corporation must file what you call an initial return or notice of change or form one under the Corporation Information Act. Okay, this is um, it's 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 a it's a return. It's an initial return to to um, confirm your name or if there's any changes to the corporation. Um, it's 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 a confirmation of the of the um of the corporation they just want you to file something okay so there's no fee for filing this form it's just something that you have to send to them um once you um once you 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 actually let me i'm actually going to share my screen and then show you a, a, a sample of that just give me one second what that looks like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna make it bigger. So this is what it's called, initial return notice of change by Ontario Corporation One. It says this, the attached form is to use by the corporation that is incorporated. And so um, I'm just gonna show you here. So all days must be completed using the following numeric value. There's no fee. Um, so you indicate whether a business corp, uh, a business corporation or non for profit corporation is filing initial return or notice of, of change by placing an X. So if you were to, I'm just going to go through it at the bottom here, um, and you will see what it looks like. This is just, you know, information about it. So this is what it looks like. It is just a simple form where you would, in, you know, put in your Ontario corporation number the date of your incorporation. Um, let me make this screen a little bit bigger for everyone to see. Um, the corporation name, okay. Um, the address, um, you know, the mailing address. It's just really a confirmation. The language and the director information on directors. Now, after 60 days of filing, there may be some changes that you may want to make to the number of director, you may want to add somebody else or take somebody else's somebody else off. And so this is where you could do it here, you know, the number of um, so here. Print or name of the person authorizing. So check appropriate box. So here you would. So if you go here, this is where you would change the director names. If you're going to add or remove director information. Okay. So this is what it looks like. It looks a little bit complicated, but um, you know that is what needs needs to be filed within um, within sixty days. Okay. And again, you know your accountant um, and you know myself take care of that. All right. So now after incorporation, if you incorporate provincially, you have your certificate of incorporation. You have copies of articles of incorporation. Again, this is on the first, the provincial level. You get your corporation income tax program account, your Ontario corporation number, and again, the opportunity to register your account with HST payroll and import export. Okay, so this is the cost, and I left this slide here for the last because, you know, you have the federally, you have the government costs. So online. Um, you know, it's $200 plus approximately $1,380 for the nuanced name search. And if you're mm -hmm. going to be operating in other provinces, it's like $40 for other provinces. And if you were to mail it in, um, like fill out a paper form, it will cost you $250. Um, if you incorporate in Ontario, like, you know, uh, as an Ontario corporation, online it's $300 plus $40 
nuance name search. If you mail it in, it's going to be 360 plus the nuance name search. Okay, so those are the basic government costs. All right, so this is the end of this presentation. Um, now I am going to exit from sharing my screen. Give me a second here. All right. Okay. It's really dark where I am, so I'm going to put on. I'm sorry. Stop presenting. All right. So that's the end of the presentation, and I am open to any questions. Um, one of the things I'm offering for all you attendees um, and, and, and Janelle, if, if it's possible, you could give me their email address. I will be sending you all a, an expense booklet that I prepared personally myself. Um, and I found it to be really, really helpful for, um, you know, whether you're a small business or, you know, just recently incorporating um, the ability to recognize all the expenses that you can claim and, and it's written in everyday language so you could understand for yourself. So when you're putting together, you know, your accounting and, you know, looking at all your expenses on an annual basis, you could feel rest assured that you have captured everything in order to give you um, the, the best uh, ability to reduce your taxes payable. So I'll be sending that to each one of you. And, you know, I will make myself available for any consultation about if you're going to incorporate your business um, and, you know, or filing your, your corporate taxes, I can speak to you personally and will uh, give you a personal discount when we do speak. Yeah, so, I'm just going to put in the chat box right now your email address, all good at allgoodcloud at gmail.com. Is that the best? Yes, that's my email address. So yes. I just put it in the chat. Um, so if anyone's interested in receiving the expense booklet, um, you can email that email. Any consultations for Sandra or questions, you can email that as well. And I'll send you the emails for registration via email. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. So thank you, Janelle. That was awesome. And uh, are there any questions at all? I'd be more than happy to to answer. Um, I have one if I don't know if anyone's mulling over thinking right now. Um, <laughs> how easy or difficult is it to add or remove a director from your corporation once you've finished filing? <clears throat> Sorry, it's actually not hard to do. Um, what usually happens is there is a form um, called removing directors um, that that just basically has you fill in the name of the director when they became a director and, you know, to confirm that this is the name you want to remove. And it's, it's all online and you just submit that and then that would be it. So it's not hard to do, and it, you know, obviously will take a few, um, a few, um, you know, when you when you do send it in, they will send. Actually, it's actually immediate. From what I remember, when I had to do that for a client, it's actually immediate. They they send you something back to confirm, and then that that would be it, and you would present this document that they give you. So, for example, if you know this person who is a director is also. Um, on your bank account for your bank for you know for the corporation you would then need to bring this document to the bank for them to actually remove that person's name from the bank records or any kind of records that you have um, legal records you would need to present this document so it's not that hard to do okay okay thanks and then is it the same difficulty level to add a like an additional province you may be operating in if you're registering provincially? It's not hard. The only thing is, you know, just like in, you know, the U.S., they have different, um, you know, every state has their own rules and regu regulations, right? And so, you know, um, every province will have that. And so you would have to go to the corporate registry 
for that particular province and find out what's you know what it what the costs are what you know what information they would need in order for you to register your corporation there and you know uh, you know that's 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 the step that you know one would need to take okay thank you um, does anyone else have questions? Because I have like a few. <laughs> and you know, you hear the dog barking. You know, it's next door. As I said, you know, I'm you know in a community here where dogs and you know, it's hot. People's door are open, and you know, dogs everywhere. <laughs> I love the sound of that. I oh, miss home. <laughs> yeah, I, I will be coming home at the end of this month. So I've been here since. Uh, early July. I've been here for almost two months. So yeah, it's great. I, I come here all the time. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I have a question in regards to my plan is to incorporate and then file for um, to be a nonprofit and then charities get charity status. Right. Um, what are the periods of times or let's say the process if I'm going to do, I heard you say it takes immediate to file and get your um, incorporation status. Um, the next step for me would be nonprofit. Is that immediate as well or is that a waiting period? And do you handle that process? Yes. So, so in terms of your nonprofit, what normally happens is you would register or incorporate your nonprofit as a corporation, nonprofit corporation under the nonprofit filing, um, you know, uh, format. And um, usually, you know, you would normally would have to be operating for about a year as a nonprofit. And um, because what happens is a jury and then you could apply for charity status at that point um, because um, part of the application for charity application, which is now done all online, by the way, um, it's there's no longer any paper form of that. Um, you would need to submit your annual financial statement um, again, of course, because you've been operating for at least one year. And, um, you know, the, I, I do take care of that. That's, that's something that I do as well. And, you know, that involves, um, again, your directors, their, their roles. It involves, um, you know, you know, the activities of your corporation, you would need to, you know, talk about them and, you know, do, add attachments like pamphlets to show or proof that you are taking on these uh, activities in your organization, um, you would, you know, need to prepare a financial statement, um, you know, upcoming uh, financial statement for the upcoming uh, charity for, you know, for the one year. And so it, it's, it's, um, yeah, there's a lot of work, but it's, it's, it's normally done. And once you submit all of that documentation to CRA, the normal time frame is about five to six months to get your charity status. But now with COVID, it might take a little bit longer. But that would be the average turnaround time frame once you submit your application. Okay, so that's for charity status. And what about just for um, a nonprofit incorporation? Yeah, so nonprofit, the same thing like incorporating. You, you do all, you know, you do everything what I just mentioned, but on a different form. And once you submit it, you get immediately your documentation, your Ontario, your um, your your uh, tax number, and and your certificate, and everything like that. It's all done. Oh, once so you do it online. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Thank not you. a lot of people know that, but that's what happens. <laughs> Yeah. Like, and this might be more on the accounting side. Mm -hmm. um, do you, are you able to file expenses um, up to a year before you actually register or incorporate your business? Um, well, okay. So, uh, okay. So a couple of things in that particular question is that, um, you know, when you start a business, usually um, most people, you know, don't 
do any kind of registration and they operate. And, and one of the beauty of that is, um, you know, Canada allows you to operate a business under your own name. So you could, although you haven't registered your business, you're actually doing business. And, and what I do encourage a lot of business owners to do is to, you know, um, report your, your revenue and expenses on your personal return that way. And, you know, chances are you may be at a loss. It may reduce your taxes payable and get you more money, right, as a tax refund. Um, and so under that sense, you should claim if you haven't registered. Um, and then obviously once you're registered then you, 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 you then, you know, you would have to claim your revenue and expenses under that. Does that, under, does that answer your question, Janelle? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people get trapped and say, oh, I, you know, I didn't register then and, you know, I registered this time and so all these things that I said, well, you know what, you really are operating and Canada Revenue Agency allows you to, you know, you can start a business under your own name. You don't have to register it if you're operating under your own name at all. You just go ahead, file your tax return, you know, put your name down on the T2125. Um, sorry, T2124 um, on the on your tax return when you're filing your personal taxes and list your revenue and expenses that you claimed that year when you haven't registered. Yeah, so that would be the best thing. Thank you. Is there any other questions? I'm tired of hearing my voice. <laughs> yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> So I, I will ask a question. So who is incorporated in this group? Who has an incorporation? I'm guessing nobody is incorporated yet. Oh, Michelle is. Okay, Michelle. Okay, Michelle. And um, are you federally or provincially incorporated? She could take herself off mute if she wants. They're playing music now. Some vehicle is passing by. Oh, provincially. Okay. Okay, great. And have you filed your, your uh, corporate tax return for the year? Like, you know, have you been able to do that and, all, and has all been well? Not yet? Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let me know if you need some assistance. I'd be more than happy to, to work with you, um, give you some inputs and in how to put everything together. Just one thing to note um, for an incorporation, once you become an incorporation, this, the tax structure is totally different, right? In terms of, you know, financial statements will now have to be prepared. You have to prepare a T2 and, you know, a lot of owners, you know, get overwhelmed with that particular, you know, process. And so one of the things I, I do is I will speak to you. And again, this is where the expense booklet will come in because that's where, you know, most people get stuck because they're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to do here, you know. And, you know, I walk you through and, um, you know, give you a, a, an, an expense worksheet and you would fill that in and then, um, you know, prepare your financial statements from that information, obviously speak with you and ask you more questions and, and then you're ready to go, you know? So um, I'd be more than happy to anyone who wants to take on the route. One of the things I do encourage is, you know, if, you're, if, if you know right away that you're gonna expand and become a business that's, you know, gonna be big and operating and you know that you're going in that route, I would say incorporate right away. Otherwise, I won't, I don't encourage you to incorporate right away. I would say as your business grow and as you earn more money, and then because there's going to be a time where your income will be at a specific level, and it's when now you're going to be taxed at a higher tax bracket, and you don't want that. And so this is when you will then decide to incorporate your business so then you can save yourself the taxes. Okay.
All righty, so it's 7.01. Um, I'm going to conclude here, Janelle. It's been a pleasure. I do thank you for creating this platform with me. And, you know, for all of you that came and, and, and made yourself available to listen, I do appreciate it. And um, I look forward to, you know, contributing to you in any way that I can. And uh, yeah, and we go forward as business owners. I'm super excited. Yeah, thank you so much for hosting this. I learned a lot. I'm pretty sure everyone else learned um, a lot as well. And um, once again, the email address, if you guys have any additional questions for Sandra, is allgoodcloud at gmail.com. I put it in the chat. And um, take advantage of that expense booklet that she has available, and it's free. Um, so just send her a quick email for that. And yeah. um, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, and have a great evening. Okay. All right, good night, everyone. Good night.